Is Ladies and gentlemen, it is Tuesday. Once again, you have tuned into the Hot Tag Podcast, THTPodcast.com. And today, we have Gabe Sapolsky on the show. Thank you for coming on the show, man. Greatly appreciate this. Hey, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Um, now, one question I would, I would like to ask, because I'm pretty sure you've never been asked this, because it's not really wrestling related, but you graduated from Temple, and I'm, uh, I'm actually going to Temple next year. So how was that experience, and, and what would you – compare it to other colleges around here? I'm really jealous because when I went to Temple, um, we didn't have a quarter of the stuff that's on the campus now. Campus is, right. is loaded now. Um, it's got everything. And, and back when I went, we didn't have much. But what we did have was an awesome basketball team. Um, so we had. I went during the Mark Macon days. And McGonagall Hall, I'll take that any day over the uh, the new place that they got there, the Lear Chorus Center. So, um we had, we had better basketball. We got better everything else. But uh, I had a great time there and a great experience. Um, the one advice I have is that the the experience at Temple, at least when I was there, is what you make it, uh, out of it. If you if you find stuff that you're interested in and take part in things, you're going to have a much better experience than if you just sit back and, and don't do that. So so that's my advice going into it. Absolutely. Now going from uh, just just a segue from Temple into wrestling. Straight out of Temple, when you graduated, you started working for ECW and Paul Heyman, and you were kind of Paul Heyman's protege. Um, biggest thing you learned from Paul Heyman in the wrestling business? Uh, I mean, there's so many things, not just about wrestling, but about life. I mean, I apply them all the time. I mean, just looking at the direction that we're going in with Evolve right now, uh, you know, Paul Heyman listen, lesson was uh, make sure that you, you zig when everybody else is zagging. You, you change it up. You go in different directions. You always have to move forward. And that's what we're doing with Evolve right now. We have the live eye pay per view uh, this Sunday, March 8th, uh, and the usual pay per view um, t- uh, time slot of 8 p.m. Eastern. And that's at www.live.com. And we're trying new things with Evolve. We're going with kind of like a new format where we have less matches, but make sure all the matches mean more. Uh, no throwaway matches, no, no multi man matches for no reason. We just make sure every match can have an impact. And uh, the show delivers more from beginning to end. So that's a way of kind of moving forward with things. And uh, that's the thing about Paul Heyman is that he was always about moving forward and, um, and trying to come up with something new. Definitely. And also it's going to be available on, on, on the Roku from what I understand, right? Yeah, well, we have the WWN Roku channel. You just go to uh, Roku and you download the WWN Roku channel. We have a lot of free content up on it right now, including um, a preview of the Roku channel, which has the entire Brian Danielson, who's better known now as Daniel Bryan, against Shingo Match, which is one of my favorite Brian Danielson matches ever. So that's definitely worth checking out. And um, we're working on other stuff. So, so that's just the beginning for us. It's the Roku channel. But, yeah, you can see uh, this Sunday's show. You basically go to www.live.com, you purchase it, and then you're going to be a- able to access it for the Roku. And that's the same for all of our upcoming shows as, as we head to WrestleMania weekend, where, of course, we have the WWN Live experience with three big shows that I'm a part of. There's seven shows total, but I'm booking three of them. Thursday night, March 26th, we have Evolve. Friday afternoon, uh, we have, and this is all Pacific Times, we have Evolve, and then Saturday afternoon, we have a WWN Super Show, which has uh, Roderick Strong and Austin Aries reuniting as Generation Next for the first time in years, and they're against Ricochet and Nation. Nation. So we got a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Now, uh, speaking of March 8th, Drew Galloway is going to be in the, in, the, in the cage match. And Drew Galloway, he was one of those guys that WWE did not capitalize on. Now, you were one of the first guys, if not the first guy, that picked him up as soon as he left the WWE. And I thought that was a great move because you put the title on him right away. And I saw him at, at a couple of indie shows in, in the Philadelphia area. And this guy is huge, you know? I mean, you guys are presenting him as a beast. I think I think it's just phenomenal, man. I think I think you guys are doing a great job with them. And Evolve is, is one of those companies, man. It's It's... It's got a little bit of everything. Everybody can come out of the show happy. And like you said, you guys you guys put on great shows and, and long matches. And, you know, as a fan, definitely great, greatly appreciate that. Yeah, we're really lucky to have Drew Galloway right now. I believe he was a guy that if he, he went to the WWE too early and got kind of caught up in the system there, um, I think he really had to do the indies for, for longer. He would have been one of those guys that would have been better off doing the independents until he was 28 or 29 or so and then going to WWE. Uh, I mean, he's got all the talent in the world. He's a WrestleMania headliner talent, in my opinion. He's as good as anybody that they got um, 
right down the top matches of WrestleMania and the total package too. I mean, charisma, size, wrestling ability, uh, his promos with us have been fantastic. I feel like fighting every time I hear one of his promos. And uh, it's an interesting story there because uh, we actually just fell into this whole thing. Actually, Drew created this for, for himself, this whole run that, he, that he's had with us. Um, when he was released, uh, Trump Beretta contacted me and was like, hey, Drew Galloway wants to wrestle me, and, uh, you know, can we do a match? And, and Galloway was down in Florida, and we had a show coming up in Florida. So I was like, all right, yeah, sure. You know, to Beretta, I highly respect. That's a tremendous mind for the business. And uh, if he wants to have a match with Drew Galloway, he can make it happen at the right price, and I'm not going to say no to it. So um, uh, originally Galloway was just supposed to be in for one shot to wrestle Beretta on that one show um, last August in Florida. And then um, Beretta actually got injured before the show, so, so that threw out the whole Galloway match. And I was like, all right, uh, I don't know what to expect out of Drew. So I started speaking to Drew. And he expressed an interest and a desire to, to basically put the promotion on his shoulders and to be able to showcase what he can do and make a more than a one shot deal, but help build the promotion and, uh, and get some, get some more eyeballs on it. Cause of course coming from WWE, he was, a, he was a known name and, um, then, um, and, and becoming a huge part of things. So we were like, okay, let's give it a shot. I mean, what, what's the most we've got to lose at this point? So uh, he actually uh, won the title the first night in that August against Chris Hero, and since that time he's taken the belt all over the world, uh, showcased it on TV shows, showcased it on everything that he can, and uh, it's been a tremendous asset for the company and, and shown that not only in the ring does he deliver, but outside the ring he's a quality person that delivers and knows what it takes to put a promotion on his shoulders. So uh, we're very lucky to have him. And this whole thing against Roderick Strong, it's Galloway versus Roderick Strong, coming up at, at Evolve this Sunday, the live eye pay-per-view at www.live.com. And that, again, that kind of came out of nothing, because originally it was uh, supposed to be a one-shot uh, deal, uh, Galloway versus Strong at um, Evolve last September. And um, the whole idea there was Galloway was new to the independence against Strong, who was like the benchmark on the independence. And they went in there, and they just had chemistry and tore the house down. Um, yeah, actually, we have the matchup on our YouTube channel, YouTube slash dgusa.tv you can watch the whole thing and and afterwards it was clear that there there's a lot more to this than just a one shot so uh we quickly uh escalated things between the two and then in january they just had a crazy fight at evolve in uh florida went to a bar and onto the streets and it was just nuts so it's been a nice simple build and now we're going to bring things back and put them in a steel cage first ever cage match in evolve and that all goes down this sunday so uh, Drew's really shown to have this ability of taking nothing and turning it into something, and, and uh, that's really the highest compliment you can pay a wrestler. Definitely, man. Definitely. Boxman, you got a question? Uh, yeah. Um, any regrets about leaving um, ROH in 2008 or none? No, I didn't leave. I got fired. So I, I didn't walk out of the door on my own accord. So, uh, you know, Ring of Honor was my baby back then, and... Um, right. And uh, I, I, I didn't want to go, but Carrie wanted to go in a different direction, I guess. I needed to break at the time as well. And, um, you know, everything worked out for the best because uh, it's weird how life goes. You know, at, the, at that moment, uh, it was a complete disaster. But then um, I had a son a year later, which if I still had the same attitude and thought process I had when, when I was with ROH, there's no way that would have happened. And, and my kid is my life right now. I, I, I can't even battle my life without my kid right now. So, um, and it changed me for the better. So, so that's how things work out in life. It's all for a reason. One thing leads to the next thing. And um, I, I love what I'm doing right now with Evolve and, and the whole WWE on family. It's, uh, it's, it's, that's how it goes, you know. So I don't really look back. I just look forward to things. Very nice. Definitely. Well, we got some good promotions out of it, so it's not so bad after all. Yeah. <laughs> but um, another match that's that's on the card of all 38, we got uh, A.R. Fox against Trent Beretta. Now, you briefly mentioned Trent Beretta, but A.R. Fox, man, hands down, he's one of my favorites. I think this guy is one of the most underrated guys. Not as far as just Yeah, we actually had some unfortunate period. news. Ber Ber Beretta's had to pull off of the show. Um, he's got a, a knee injury, and I know he's going to be announced for some stuff coming up soon, so there's going to be all this speculation that he's done with us. So I'm just going to kill those rumors right now that um, Beretta is definitely not done with us. He, uh, you know, we, I, I love him, and he's going to be a, a part of WWN as long as he wants to be, and, and when he's back from injury, he'll, he'll definitely be back on future shows. 
So uh, we had to switch that up, but we're going to do AR Fox against Matt Cage now, and um, that match has a lot of potential as well. Matt Cage is, is unfamiliar to a lot of people. He's been really making a big name for himself in the Midwest scene, and um, he's a guy that I, we actually had in the tag team match a couple of years ago at Dragon Gate USA, and he's rapidly improved since then and developed like a new persona for himself. So uh, this is going to be a big opportunity for Matt Cage. And um, we're doing this thing where, where instead of having a booker or the management bring some new wrestlers, we're letting the wrestlers, uh, our established wrestlers, bring in new wrestlers and endorse new wrestlers. And they can be, like, upcomers, or they can even be established veterans that haven't been in yet. I mean, it can be anybody, international guys. So we have a thing where uh, Uwan Nation is endorsing Matt Cage to come in. So Uwan Nation and AR Fox, of course, have a long history. Um, they're brothers in the ring. And uh, so it's interesting. We've got AR Fox against the guy that Uwan Nation endorsed and Matt Cage. So it's going to be a huge opportunity for him. Definitely. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Paul Heyman and Gabe Sapolsky talking, always staying ahead of the game. <laughs> there you go. But um, as, as far as, you know, you've, You've worked with so many people, including Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, and so forth. Who who do you think are the next couple guys to look forward to on the on the indies as far as really blooming if they haven't already? Um, I mean, Matt Cage, I have high hopes for. I mean, pretty much anybody that you see that we book, I have high hopes for. Us, we wouldn't book them um, if you're talking about guys who really haven't made their reputation with us yet. Um, Team Tremendous is debuting this Sunday. And um, they they haven't uh, they they've been making a name everywhere, uh, and now they're finally coming to us. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they bring to the table firsthand. Um, when you when we go to WrestleMania weekend, we have Ethan Page who's coming in, who's been endorsed by Johnny Gargano, the DGUSA champion. And um, Ethan Page uh, is a guy we've had in a couple of times, and and I've always monitored him, and and he's shown a lot of improvement. And I think that this year is set to be his breakout year. And uh, at the top of that list is Timothy Thatcher, who we've, we've had in for, for a little bit now. We haven't been pushing him down people's throats. We've been loving him climb up the card. But uh, I really believe 2015 is going to be the year of Timothy Thatcher. He's a guy that he has, he has everything. And um, it's a great mind for the business. And, and he does, a, does an old-school style but with a completely new twist on it. So he's a very uh, unique and innovative performer as well. Yeah, definitely excited for that. It's funny you mentioned uh, Team Tremendous because that was actually my next question. I saw them at uh, House of Hardcore and a couple other shows, and those guys are awesome, man. I mean, I when they first came out, I was I was kind of questionable, and after that, about two minutes into the match, I was I was a huge fan, and ever since then, these guys are are some of the best guys on the indies right now. So definitely look forward to that. If anybody hasn't seen their matches, get evolved just for that. Team Tremendous are great. The main event is going to be awesome. AR Fox is going to be on there. Chris Hero we also have, and Drew Gulak. Those that's going to be a that's going to be a stiff match, man. I'm excited for that one. Yeah, me too. We haven't had Hero in since August, and uh, we did the thing with him and Gulak on that, so we're finally going to get to have the match. And oh, yeah. uh, anytime you got Chris Hero on the card, it's a um, it's a it's a huge addition. It's a great addition. I've been working with him since 2005 now, so it's an, it's been a decade now. I've, I'll have to mention that to Chris. I just realized that. And um, so it's, it's, it's great to have him back. And Drew Gulak's another guy that uh, he's just ready to reach the next level. I mean, this is a guy that I, I believe offers a lot both in and out of the ring. And uh, he, he's ready to take his career to the next level now, too. Awesome. Um, Samoa Joe, recently, he's, he's a free agent. Any chance of uh, seeing you work with him in the future? Yeah, I mean, I've talked to Joe. We, we haven't been able to reach an agreement, but, but I've talked to him, and there's always a chance. So, um, yeah, you know, whenever you get a guy like some Joe available to you, especially with all the fresh matches on the table, it has to be something that's on the table if the circumstances are right. Definitely. Boxman, you got another question? Yeah, I got one from the Facebook. Um, Stephen uh, McBreen wants to know, how's Jimmy Bauer? Oh, man, I don't know. I lost track of that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, well, he's got another one then. He wants to know how the relationship between ROH and Full Impact was. Oh, back in the day when I was there? Yes. Okay, well, it was great because uh, Sal Hamway, he uh, handled all the ROH production, the DVDs and, and everything. So uh, he's the, the owner and still is of FIP. Um, FIP just had an awesome match with uh, Roderick Strong and Trent Beretta the other week. I just watched it uh, the other afternoon. Absolutely awesome match worth going out of your way to see. Um, and um, so, so it, was, it was a strong relationship, and I had the opportunity to book both Sal so, uh, hired me in 2004 to book while I was also booking ROH. 
So we got to do a lot of fun and different type things in, in FIP. And if you look at FIP, a lot of the stuff that happened in ROH happened in FIP first. And a lot of the guys we'd have down in FIP first. And, and we got to do, we, like, we teamed up, uh, I think it's the only place where CM Punk and Samoa Joe were a tag team. We, we teamed them up in the same group on, on a number of occasions. And, and we'd do stuff like that. And Brian Danielson had a very entertaining long title reign in FIP before he did in ROH. Definitely. Yeah. Um, do you think the Northeast will always be a hot spot for the indie wrestling? Yeah, you know, I can't tell you why the Northeast gets that much more internet attention or or this type of crowd or anything, but it goes by region, and it's just uh, the Northeast is always going to be a hot area. I mean, you see it now at the arena in Philly. It's it's heating up there again. Now you got your car, CCW, have hardcore ROH, and, and they're all drawing pretty decent crowds there. So um, it's just... It's just the way things are, and I, I think it's going to continue that way. I guess it's just a, a thing that you go by, you know, regions in, in, in the country. I mean, we saw the same thing when we went to China. When we did the China tour last November, we were in two very different regions of China, and there were different crowds in, in, uh, in both regions. So I guess I guess it's just a thing. Definitely. Um, any chance I've seen you doing shows uh, with Evolve in, in Philadelphia in the near future? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I talk, to, I talk to the arena all the time. Uh, right now, they just have a lot of stuff going on, and I feel if we run the arena, we have to have a we have to bring a lot to the table. We can't just go in there with a regular show. We need to we need to make sure that we have a bunch of special attractions. Definitely, um, we got actually got a, one more question here from the Facebook. Uh, Anthony McGoldrick, after watching the current crop of talent and NXT develop into more refined characters, who do you believe could be the next big star to transition from the independents into NXT and WWE? You kind of briefly. Answer that, but I've, I've who's in NXT it. now, or who could no? Who, who, who do you NXT. see going to NXT in the near future that could really be a big? I mean, star? I I don't want to. It's a difficult question for me to answer because if I answer it, it's going to cause speculation <laughs> that somebody's going to sign, and I don't want to do that because if someone is really going to sign and then it gets on the internet, they might not sign up. So <laughs> it always drives me crazy when I see the internet saying, "Oh, this guy's about to sign with WWE," or "This guy's signed with WWE," because WWE really doesn't like that. So it's something that one day could blow someone's deal with with, with yeah. NXT and WWE. And I mean, when you think about it, I mean, I mean, really, like, like if going to WWE, you can make millions of dollars. And even if you're a mid card guy for ten years, you're still going to make millions of dollars. And worst case scenario, you're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then go to the independents and be able to charge more money. So if you cost someone their job in NXT for something stupid like that. Then uh, or WWE is that the same thing? If you cost someone their job in WWE because of that other chance to sign, you basically just cost them and their children and their children's children, their children's children. I mean, you've just changed the whole dynamic of their family for generations because they they don't have that money. So um, I never like to speculate on that. As far as um, who they who they have right now, to me, uh, Finn Balor, which uh, is is like uh, going to be a WrestleMania main eventer one day. I, I think that he's got the highest ceiling of anybody there. But I mean, there's so much. I mean, you know, you got Neville and Zayn and Owens and and uh, Callisto and Crow and I mean, all those guys uh, bring something unique to the table. I know I'm missing some names, but um, they, they got a. I mean, it's really like a dream promotion right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, it is. Steven Sanders from, from Facebook also wants to know if you have any uh, interesting stories about Raven. I have totally interesting stories about Raven. Mine are um, over hours, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what's Raven up to these days? I haven't really heard much out of him. I guess he's really, he's not even doing like conventions and stuff. I used to see him at a convention like every, every year or so, but I don't even see him at those anymore. Yeah, last time I seen Raven, he was at Extreme Rising, and and he refused to wrestle. So, I'm guessing that was yeah, the, yeah. So. yeah I, I I learned a lot from that guy. So you know, there, people say a lot of things about him, but I I was lucky. I and I learned a lot from him, and he was a a very uh, willing teacher. You know, he actually back in the day, his little story is I yeah you know I used to write the program for ECW, and he would sit there and read the program and then go through the articles with me and say how I could present someone differently or maybe some different wording I could have used to get a different story or, you know, to get a, to get the story across and, and stuff like that. So he, he was, he was always uh, very uh, generous as far as his teaching goes. Definitely. And uh, last question. Um, you were around ECW since the beginning. Uh, were you ever around Eddie Gilbert and 
how was he as a as a person? I was always a big fan. <laughs> I got, of I got one one Eddie Gilbert story, and the only time I ever spoke to him. So I was hired by Todd, or not hired. He agreed to let me write the newsletter and gave me that shot in the summer of 1994, which was the summer before my my final year. Or was it 1993? In 1993, um, yeah, because 94 is January. So um, um, Eddie Gilbert was a booker at the time. So I had called up Eddie Gilbert, me being the journalist that I was, knew that you have to be persistent. So I called Eddie to get an interview because back then I did real interviews for the newsletter and uh, didn't hear back from him. So I kept calling Eddie Gilbert every single day. And back then it was answer machines where you'd have to hear the whole message. I call him every day, leaving a message, waiting for him to call. So finally he calls me back one day and he goes, hey, I was in Japan. Are you ready to do this interview? And so I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, no, this guy's in Japan having listened to my message, like, every day now for three weeks or whatever. So I go, I go, okay, can you give me, like, ten minutes to prepare for it? Because I wasn't prepared. I just got out of the blue. So he said something. I forget exactly what. He was not happy, and he hung up on me. That was the only time I ever heard from him. Because then when I finally went back for my senior year in September, uh, and I the first time I walked into Todd Gordon's office, the first thing he told me was that he Gilbert was fired and Paul Heyman was in as Booker. So uh, that was that was it for Eddie. But uh, I was a huge Eddie Gilbert fan. I mean, uh, unfortunately, he's kind of lost on on the new generation. Uh, he does because he doesn't didn't really have a WWE run where you would see anything, and they they bring that footage back a lot. He was mainly a territory guy, but um, he'd be a guy that'd be an internet darling today. Yeah, I'd I'd love to see him in the Hall of Fame. But, uh, yeah, I would, too. I mean, he definitely deserves it. I mean, uh, one of the all-time greats. Absolutely. Um, Boxman, you got any other questions before we leave? Actually, I had one quick one. Um, did you watch the um, Wrestle Kingdom 9, uh, the one that Jeff Jarrett and uh, Global Force put out? And just want to know if you had I any watched thoughts. The, um, I watched the Bushi and, and uh, Nakamura, which was one of my favorite matches ever. <laughs> yeah, that was a great I almost match. quit after I watched that match because I was like, there's no point in ever having more pro wrestling <laughs> after that <match."> <laughs> <laughs> It's almost done at that point, but uh, yeah, that was tremendous. All right, well, hey, Gabe, man, we appreciate having you on. Why don't you go ahead and uh, plug Evolve 38 one more time for the fans so they can they can get the way around? All right, yep, this Sunday, Evolve 38, um, 8 p.m. regular pay per view time slot, but it's on iPay pay per view at www.live.com. We have to have tickets available at dgusa.tv. It's our return to the New York market. You can get all the info at dgusa.tv. Drew Galloway versus Roderick Strong inside of a steel cage and a lot of stuff underneath. Um, and then we're heading to San Jose WrestleMania weekend. We got Evolve Thursday, March 26th. We got Drew Galloway versus PJ Black. Um, and PJ Black might be better known to you as Justin Gabriel. And uh, this is an exciting situation, too, because these are going to be his first major independent matches. And this guy is super hungry to show what he can do. He's, he's another one of these guys that feels like he's never given really a chance in WWE to showcase himself, and now he's coming to uh, to do exactly that. And we have him on all three shows. Cause then we have Friday afternoon, we have Evolve, and Saturday afternoon we have the WWE Super Show, and that's all part of seven live events that include Shimmer, the King of Indies Tournament, which will really focus the California talent, and um, and uh, tied to Big Battle. So we got a lot going on, and you can go to www.live.com for info on all of that. On the Evolve and WWE on Super Show side, we got Chris Hero coming in, the Evolve champion Drew Galloway, DG USA champion Johnny Gargano, uh, Ricochet, La Nation, Rick Swan, AR Fox, Drew Gulak, Timothy Thatcher, Biff Busick, uh, just Tommy Hen coming in from Europe. So we have an awesome talent roster, and, and uh, it's not going to be one throwaway match on, on the entire weekend for us. So again, WWNLive.com. If you can't be there in person, um, and by the way, the, the afternoon shows on Friday and Saturday will be over in time for you to go to another show that night so you can make a double header out of the day. So um, we're having that take place, and all those shows will happen uh, on live eye pay per view as well. So uh, it's going to be an awesome weekend. Absolutely, man. We're definitely excited to see these shows. Um, thanks again for coming on, man. Really appreciate it. I know you're a busy man, so. This is, uh, hey, I appreciate you having me on, and for everybody out there that, that listened to all this, I hope it was worth your time, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to listen to it. Absolutely. If we